What's up guys, Marcus here from Studio One Expert, and today we're gonna to be having a look at Video Slave 2 Pro. Now Video Slave 2 Pro is an application that's specifically designed for video playback. And the beautiful thing about this application is it's a brand new 64-bit application, and it's kind of similar to VLC Player in that it can handle tons and tons of different codecs natively. So you don't have to worry about downloading anything. And the other cool thing is that it's not based on the QuickTime engine. So let's just head over to their site here for a second. You can see here Video Slave 2. So time code, synchronized movie playback, wide range of codecs. There's a lot of information. I'd suggest if you're interested in this, definitely head over to the website where there's a lot of different information, uh, frequently asked questions, some technical questions and whatnot. So it's really helpful. So let's head back over to Studio One here for a second, and let's just have a quick discussion about what we're gonna be doing here. So I've got a session here, and I've got two different cues in here, and these actually go along with a video. So here's the actual video. I've got it open in the background here in QuickTime Player 7, and you can see that it has embedded timecode information here. So if I go back to the very beginning here, you can see that it has 00, 59, 58, 00. So we've got exactly two seconds of silence, and if I go frame by frame, and I was to move all the way up through here, by the time we get to the very end, we're gonna roll over to zero one, one which is our first frame of action. Okay, so this is the video that we wanna be bringing into Studio One, but we're not gonna be using Studio One's video player. I'm just gonna go ahead now and close this up. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be sending MIDI timecode, because that's the way that this program works, is it's based off of MIDI timecode. We're gonna send MIDI timecode out of Studio One. It's gonna get picked up by Video Slave 2 over here. And then what we're basically gonna do is we're gonna sync up the video in this application based on the MIDI timecode that's being sent out from Studio One. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here, let's just, there's a little, option here to make this stay on the top. So regardless of where we're sitting in the Studio One timeline, this is gonna stay on top. Now, before we go in too quickly, this is very, very simple to use. Before we go in too quickly, let's just hop into the preferences for a second here. And you'll notice here, we've got some different options. So as for the MTC, MIDI timecode and MMC source, I'm using the IAC driver bus one which I set up through my Mac here. I can just head over to my MIDI setup. Let's just go ahead and show our MIDI window. Move this out of the way for now. I've just gone ahead and I'm using the IAC driver, which allows me to basically patch in MIDI information without having to route external cables. It's a very simple way to do this. Now this also can work off of network and there's some different ways you can set this up. You can actually set this up so that it's running on an entirely different computer. So you could have a separate laptop where the video is being played back from that laptop so that it's not taking up any resources on your system. And you can basically just connect these, you know, through a network connection and you can be sending MIDI timecode out of your Studio One session. And then the application is picking that up on this side. It's syncing to the MIDI timecode and it's following. And then you can set any offsets if you need to and everything as well. But I'm not gonna get too much into that right now. What I wanted to do is basically just, you know, show you guys how it works. So one of the other cool things here we have is we have an option to go full screen on a particular screen. So I've got two different monitors set up. I've got a Sync Master and I've got a newer version of it. And then based on whichever one of these monitors, and if you had multiple monitors, you'd have multiple selections here, you can basically choose to go full screen. So what we're gonna do first of all here is two ways we can load a video in here. I can go to add movie to playlist, or I can just grab a finder window here, and we can just directly drag and drop this, so very similar to Studio One. Okay, so now with this here, you can actually load multiple videos. So you could have like eight different reels or 10 different reels of videos. And as long as you sign them a time code position of where they're supposed to start, they're gonna follow Studio One's time code. So essentially you could you know, work on a whole program with multiple different reels. And you could be using this one program here to have all of these different reels loaded up. And then based on the time code that's being sent out, you know, it would, it would switch reels appropriately. Now, you'll notice here that on my time code for the actual movie here, 
I've got these different time code displays here, but I actually have a, a time code start of 5958, which is my two seconds of pre-roll here. But you'll notice in my Studio One session, if I come back to the beginning here, you'll notice that I have everything set to start on a zero one boundary, so hour one. And one of the main reasons for that is simply because we have our bars here and I want my bar one, my downbeat of my bar one to start exactly at the first frame of action. So that's why this is set up this way, but that's no problem because we can set up an offset. Okay, so very quickly before we do that, let's just have a really quick look at what's going on with our audio devices. So you can see here I'm using my IAC driver. I've just named it Slave. I've created a new instrument device here, and I'm just sending to bus one. Bus one is the name of our IAC driver. So this is where our MIDI timecode is going out of. And if we come back to the top here and you keep your eye on the very bottom, you'll notice that it's sending MIDI timecode. See that orange triangle here? Right? So this is able to pick up this MIDI timecode here. Okay, so in order to get this to work, it's very simple. Let's just go ahead and drag this back onto our main screen. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this timecode box, and I just wanna make sure that the timecode address of this video is matching the actual timecode of the video. So we have embedded timecode that told us the exact start was 5958 and it's picked that up. And in addition to that, we actually have a visual burn-in on the actual video export that I, that I have here. Now, in addition to that, we also can display this over here. So if we go into overlays, we can see we have time code selected here. And then in view, if I wanted to toggle that on or off, I can do so. I'm just gonna leave it on for now. So now that we know we've got our full screen set over here, sorry, in the display section, we've set the proper monitor. When we click go full screen, it's literally going to go full screen. So now it's occupying the full screen over here, right? Now I can press escape here. Okay, so that's really, really handy because if you have two monitors, you can have your studio one session and you can have this occupy a full monitor or you can have it occupy your main monitor if you want to. All right, so essentially, like I said, very easy to set up. We've got Studio One set up to start at a zero one offset, so a zero one hour. Now we have to deal with this offset here, but we've already defined in the time code section here exactly where it starts. So now what I can do, you can see I have the incoming time code. Watch over here as I change my position here, it's changing. So we need to offset this. So let's go ahead and offset this by minus one so we have a perfect match here. So now, Anything that we move, let's go ahead and we're gonna engage this option over here, which is waiting for the MIDI timecode. And now you can see everything's following. So we have over here, as I start to scrub through, you can see that everything's following frame by frame by frame. And that's, that's essentially all you have to do. And even if we had multiple different reels, it's gonna grab the MIDI timecode based on what's happening in our timeline and it's gonna pick that up. So now, a super quick example. Let's go ahead and solo this out, bring this in here. We can choose different display options if we want. So for example, I don't want to see the left side information here and I didn't need to see any of this. Here's a cool option here. We have the audio that's coming in. I'm just going to go ahead and can this audio because it's coming from my DAW. Now we can go ahead. I've got some right click options. I can show it at half size. I can show it at full size or like I said, I can show it at full screen. So let's go back to the beginning here. But let's say I wanted to try something different. Okay, and then like I said, we can go full screen too. So if I wanted to hear this in full screen, I could literally come back to the top, so solo it out, press play, and then I can literally enter full screen. And we have beautiful playback, frame accurate. I can come out of here as I need to, try a different track out.
So that's basically it there. And as you can see, it's not doing any hit on our CPU. So we can even be in really low latency and working along with this in the background. So this is really, really simple to set up really powerful because we can use it on multiple different computer systems. Doesn't just have to be the same system. You can set any offsets if you need to set any offsets so that you have, you know, frame accurate sync running a secondary application. And like I said, super easy to set up. We're just using that MIDI time code that's being sent out. And then if you didn't want to use the IAC driver, Video Slave also has its own virtual driver that it creates. So if we go into general, we go into preferences here, you can see that it's going to create a Video Slave MTC MMC in virtual. But like I said, rock solid, super stable, and just, you know, instant, instant gratification. Uh, you have the peace of mind and reassurance of playing multiple different video codecs. So no more worrying about transcoding. No more worried about, do I have this QuickTime codec installed? This is just a fantastic application that will allow you to work very, very easily. So Video Slave 2 Pro by Non-Lethal Applications, an extremely favorable program to think about using for anyone who's doing any work whatsoever with Studio One and composing sound for picture. So, I know that I will be using this henceforth, and I hope you guys got something from this, and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.